We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope everybody's doing good today. Make sure you guys have your teacups ready. Get ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get oh, ready. Because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Kamaya Mobley situation. So if you guys don't know Kamaya Mobley, she was a young girl who was kidnapped from birth at the hospital. And basically, I talked about this on my news channel, I believe, when it first happened. And she found out that her mother had... She found out that the person she thought was her mother had kidnapped her and that her parent was like a teen mom. It was such a mess, honey. But anyways, after this situation, she kind of stood by her kidnapper's side because that's all she's ever known. That's the only mother she's ever known. So Ayanla Van Zant decided to basically invite her and her mother onto the show because Kamaya Mobley's mother um, contacted Fix My Life. And then she ended up backing out of the show. But the father, her boyfriend, and her new stepmom, they were all there and when I tell you this entire situation got crazy Kamaya went nuts when she found out that she would have to stay at the house and that she was not able to contact her boyfriend or her father it got so crazy that she started threatening Miss Van Zandt going off on her saying that she's what women bigger than her um it got so bad that when her boyfriend tried to step in to calm her down she got mad at her boyfriend was like what you taking up for her and then she slapped her boyfriend in the face this entire situation was such a hot mess that it made it on to the news station. I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Parents made the trip to South Carolina, Alexis meeting them for the first time. I feel like I do owe them that to give them a chance, you know, get to know them. Do you think about that ever, How, what your life would have been like? I'm not saying they, they weren't going to be good parents. I'm not saying that at all, but... It would have been a different life. When you find out you got another family out there, it's, it's just more love. <laughs> Alexis openly sobbing in court, seeing her mom now behind bars. That did hurt that they had her in cuffs. She's a gentlewoman. These things shouldn't happen, and they never should happen. And when they do, everybody's life is turned upside down. They're Alexis's attorney, Justin Bamberg, says they will look into what legal options she has going forward, but they also have to focus on the basics. Driver's license, social security number, birth certificate, the, the basic The young woman document. who was kidnapped from the old university hospital as a newborn almost 20 years ago is once again in the news. Kamaya Mobley, who now goes by Alexis Manigo. She appeared on a TV show, Fix My Life, on the Oprah Network last weekend. Well, during the show, she became upset and screamed expletives and threats at the show's host. However, her biological father, who was with her at the time, says the show did not reveal the full story. News 4 Jax reporter Chris Parento tells us what else her dad is saying. Saturday night, this episode of Fix My Life ran on the Oprah Network. As the show went on, the host, Ayanla Van Zant, told Mobley's father, Craig Aiken, that she wanted the teen to stay at the house for the night and for him to leave. During his Facebook Live, Aiken said, quote, I was not going to let my daughter stay nowhere overnight, end quote. That is when Mobley gets mad. Aiken also said the show was not what they expected, saying, quote, she was trying to make me mad with Kamaya. I was happy with her. And, quote, I didn't feel like she was going to fix my life because if my life gets fixed, we're going to do it together. In a separate Facebook post, Aiken wrote, the show was recorded in September and that his daughter has come a long way since then. He also questioned the host's motives, saying, quote, with all the advertising that Ayanla is doing about the situation, Whose life do you think she is fixing, hers or my daughter's? Greg Aiken also claimed the host's son, who is a cameraman for the show, even threatened Mobley at one point during the filming, which led to her getting mad. We reached out to Aiken to see if he wanted to do an interview about the show today, but did not hear back. All right, so you guys just watched that news clip. So like I said, the situation was just really volatile to the point where Eliana Van Zant was like, you know what, I'm done, we're canceling the show. But of course, you know, ratings matter, so they still chose to air it. And so what's been going on now is over the past few days, the father of Kamaya Mobley, who was on the show, I forget his name, he's been going off on social media. They've been blasting Ayanla Van Zant and saying that, you know, this was all lies, this was part of production. And the reason why everything went sideways is because her son got involved. 
involved and try to cuss them out. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch these two live streams of the father talking about what happened behind the scenes. Go ahead and check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Son, he said, don't be calling my mama no bitch, bitch. He I said, said, he said, you not going to call my mama. Turn that down. Let me tell y'all something why they started kicking us out. What he said was, you not going to keep calling my mama a bitch or I'm going to beat your ass. That's what he said. And when he said that right though, I flipped over the little table that I front and then me and him finna go at it. You know what I'm saying? Security came in, me, Irvin, my, 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 my daughter, all of us, we don't rush they mind. You know, the, I guess the hood don't came out of us. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, he had don't say something to my daughter. I told him don't say nothing else to my daughter. Me and him got into her son was a cameraman. He 40 some years old. Talking about he don't be in the prison and all this old stuff. And how he in the black uh, religion and all this old type of stuff. But yet and still, he just can't don't cuss out to say something, you know what I'm saying, to my daughter about saying something to his mama. I didn't even must know it was his her son until she till he had don't came out of his mouth and said it after he... After uh, my daughter and uh, Indiana was was uh, was yeah, arguing, you know what I'm saying? Her son had said something to my daughter. I said something to him. Me and him getting ready to fight. Security came. Security like, please, man, don't fight in here, man. I don't want to take you to jail. Y'all, let's come on out of here. All us finna, I ain't gonna lie, man. We one family, man. We would not separate on each other, none of that, man. I don't care what problem we had went through in the past. All us was going head first, going in there, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they was, you know what I'm saying, for what he said about Kamaya. That's the reason why they kicked us out in the rain. They, they didn't give us no umbrella or nothing. We was in the rain. They put us out of the mansion. You know what I'm saying? As we was going out in the mansion, they locked the door because they, did, they didn't want us to go back in there. They were trying to say they were afraid that we was going to hurt them. I hurt somebody in there, so they locked us out. Me, my, my wife, uh, Kamaya, and Irvin, they locked us out in the rain. We was getting rained on. We ran to the car. When we got in the car, here come her producer running behind us. He don't, he telling me he don't hurt his foot. He fell in a puddle because he thought that we had a, 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 microphone. a microphone that, you know what I'm saying? One of they microphones or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even much driving that night. You know what I'm saying? My daughter Kamaya had a rental car. She want, we was driving. As a matter of fact, my executive, co-executive producer ended up having to follow them down the street. Sure, sure, well, okay. uh, rental car into a pole. Lang. And, and going after her, fell and broke his foot. Oh, you he broke his foot, cuz? Hey, cuz, that's all. Hold on, hold on. You, lie, yeah. man, that's lie, you, you broke your foot? Crazy, man. Man. Yeah, yeah. Break my foot. The producer both oh, had broke, broke his, his foot. foot running after oh, her man. We had what? a microphone. Yeah, now, man. I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna wait, cuz this ain't live. I'll tell y'all what. But as soon you as you post it. Tell you what. We gonna, we gonna go live. We gonna, we gonna live when she go live. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna go live. tell y'all what happened. Hey, Big Cub was here with me, man. Huh. Hey, 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 you know what? That real truck, man, hey, man, that real truck. I don't know what she talking about, man. Look, huh? I was, I was sliding through the A huh. in the rental truck. I was hitting Lenny Mall. I was going and getting me a little. I can't even talk about what she I was doing. But hey, hey, I was, I was living. You had the truck. I had the truck. <laughs> So wait a minute. Can you run that? All right, so you guys just watched those video clips of the father going off. So now, like the old saying goes, there's always three sides to every story, his, hers, and uh, the truth, okay? And I believe that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Now, I watched the entire show, and it was really disturbing to say the least. For one, I don't understand why this young girl chose to go on to the show. It seemed like she was not really looking for help. And, I mean, I understand she's gone through a lot. They also had Carlina White come out and speak about her experience of being kidnapped and then finding out years later that you know her whole life was basically a lie so I can imagine what this girl is going through you know emotionally and traumatically but people also need to understand that she's always going to have a connection with the so-called kidnapper because that is who raised her from birth she doesn't really have that same connection with her biological parents she's learning to have that connection but you know I can't fault her for still loving the mother the only mother that she's ever really known you know what I'm saying and I think that that's where Ms. Van Zant was just pushing a little bit too hard she has the right to feel like she still wants a connection with her so-called kidnapper mother you know what I mean Think about it with Stockholm Syndrome. You got grown folks who can get kidnapped and live with their kidnapper for a year plus, and then they end up having Stockholm Syndrome. Imagine a newborn baby being raised by somebody for, you know, 19 years. Of course they're going to have Stockholm Syndrome. Of course they're not going to look at that person as a bad guy. Of course, you know, she's still, of course she's still going to look at that woman as her mother. You know what I'm saying? Now, 
My thing is this, okay? I understand where the father's coming from, but I'm gonna need somebody to explain to me why this bootleg DMX was fucking a 14-year-old when he was 24. Because Kamai's mother is 34 years old, the father is 42, meaning that he started smashing her at 14. He even said it. He claims that he didn't know her age until she had the baby at 16, which I call bullshit on that, okay? But regardless of the situation, Kamai is here, she was born, and I could not imagine what that young woman went through. You know, one, to be pregnant at 16, your body's going through all these changes, you can see it in her face, her skin is broke out. You know, she was going through a lot. She gives birth only for some woman to come and kidnap her baby. I mean, you could just hear the pain in her voice in those interviews when she was crying and just begging for her baby to come back. No. Yeah. <laughs> she should have never left out my arms from the beginning. <laughs> With her mother and grandmother offering comfort, 16-year-old Shannara Mobley is reliving Friday afternoon again and again. She still can't make any sense of what happened and why someone did it. Please, please marry my baby. I know you, if you don't have no kids, if you, I mean, if you was faking a pregnancy or, I mean, you just can't have no kids. I mean, how you think I feel? I own it true enough, I'm only 16 years old, but I have family, so that's my first child. A newborn named Kamaya, who never came home to sleep in her new bassinet or to play with her new toys. The family is a bundle of nerves. I worry about the baby health, what's the baby going through, and my granddaughter, because emotionally she's about to break down. Shannara's family thought the kidnapper was a hospital employee. The woman even called the baby by name. But all that help in the hospital room suddenly became a mother's nightmare. Yeah, I try to think positive, thank the lady just trying to help my baby. Then again, I think my baby could be crashed. She could take, she could be trying to take pills and smother my baby. I don't know what to think. And that would be the that, that would be the happiest thing in the world to be right now is to hold my baby. And I know that she's not going nowhere. Else. From what I heard, the woman who kidnapped the baby did that because she was pregnant with her own child and she had miscarried. So instead of her just getting pregnant again, she decided to take somebody else's child. And for that, I can't forgive her. But again, it's not my story to forgive. She didn't raise me. She's not my mother. So on the outside looking in, I can be like, you know what? You're a cold hearted bitch. How dare you do that to this young mother? How dare you steal her baby? But that's me from the outside looking in. Kamaya is the one who was being raised by the woman. You know what I'm saying? That's the only mother that she's known. So she's going to look at the situation totally different. Now, as far as her attitude, I understand hurt. I understand pain, I understand being irritated, but there's never a reason for you to disrespect somebody who's old enough to be your grandmother, okay? At the end of the day, she didn't have to come onto that show. Ayana don't force nobody to come on there and fix their lives. At any point in time, she could have changed her mind and said, you know what, this is too much, I don't wanna deal with this, I'm out. Talk to me, what the f is your problem, bitch? For her to show out in the manner in which she showed out, was embarrassing, okay? And that just lets me know that she learned a lot of these little sneaky characteristics from her kidnapper mother. Because when she first came onto the show, she was mild, meek, soft-spoken, shy. And for her to flip from that type of personality to the personality that got up in Ayana's face and who threatened to beat her ass and called her all types of bitches, lets me know that, you know, the real her lies somewhere in between. And then for her to flip out on her boyfriend, who had been nothing but respectful the whole show, he was very quiet, he didn't have a lot to say, he He's basically listening, you know, he was there to support her. And for her to flip out on him and slap him, it was just so disgusting to watch that play out. And I'm sure, yes, there were some things going on on the back end, but her attitude, her demeanor, the way she went off was totally uncalled for. Because at any point in time, she could have walked away without the theatrics, without the threats, without everything. And her father making excuses for her behavior is not helping. And I feel like the problem is this. Her father wants to rebuild that relationship with her, the relationship that he lost out on, okay? So basically, he's making excuses for her behavior. He's letting her, you know, just kind of do whatever. She's almost walking over him and the mother. And I think the mother has come to the realization, like, you know what? I understand, you know, I gave birth to you, but I didn't raise you. You're not going to keep stressing me out. You're not going to talk to me crazy. You're not going to pop off on me. You know what I'm saying? You can go do you and I'm going to do me. And I think that's where the mother's at with her situation with this little girl. But the father still wants that relationship. So he's basically allowing her to run the show. 
And I don't think that that's healthy for her. She needs to understand that there can be consequences for your actions. When you pop off that hard like that to a stranger, because she didn't know Ayana like that, had she popped off like that to someone on the street, she could have either got her ass whooped or possibly even killed, okay? You don't do things like that. You don't pop off like that. You don't disrespect somebody like that. And if Ayana's son decides to jump in and go off, I can't blame him. You're not about to sit here and call my mother all types of bitches and threaten to whoop her ass. I definitely understand her son for stepping up and trying to defend his mother. You know, the whole situation was messy as hell. I personally don't think that it really needed to be aired. I also personally don't think that Ayanna Van Zandt really be fixing anybody's life. I really feel like a lot of this is for TV. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this is for ratings. You know, it's a feel-good moment. But, you know, when it's all said and done, I haven't really seen anybody's life that she's really fixed. You know what I'm saying? So again, like I said, the whole situation was just sad. And I feel like they let her go as far as she did with her popping off because of the trauma and what she went through in her past. But again, if she was to pop off like that on the street to somebody who didn't know her situation, she might find herself six feet under. You need to get that anger under control and realize that everybody's not here to judge you. Everybody's not here to, you know, ridicule you, to make you feel bad. People are just trying to help, you know what I'm saying? But the whole situation was just nuts. If you guys have not watched it, I will post a link down below. You guys can check out the episode. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Ayanla Van Zant getting cussed out and threatened by Kamaya Mobley. And then also, how do you guys feel about what her father had to say on Instagram Live and how he's saying that all of this was staged and, and that Ms. Van Zant was the one who disrespected them and, you know, her son jumped into the mix. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to click the link down below to get the new t-shirts and the coffee mugs. All right. Deuces. Next <laughs>